Don't talk about everything. Don't talk don't about talk everything. Don't talk about that late night Taco Bell <laughs> experience exactly. in the bathroom at 3 a.m. Yeah, don't exactly. Welcome to the Artful Dollar Podcast. It's Ryan, a financial coach, an artist, a tattooer, entrepreneur, and I am super stoked to have a, a guest today, someone I just reached out to on Instagram, who I've been following for a while. We have Brock Johnson with us who is what I've come to learn, an avid tattoo collector. But more importantly, he is, uh, I'm describing him as an Instagram wizard. He delves in the dark arts of social media and he shares a lot of what he's learning and trends and you know, really takes, uh, I think, a very skillful and adaptable approach to social media, which I think serves us in all areas of life. And so why not approach social media in the same way? So thank you so much, Brock, for, for joining me today. Yeah, Ryan, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here, really excited for this conversation. And I, uh, I appreciate that introduction. I don't think I've ever been called an Instagram wizard before, but I think that that totally fits. I totally get it. And I like tattoo collector because my collection of tattoos is quite a hodgepodge collection of mismatched styles. So I think that's a perfectly um, appropriate term to describe my, my body as my body of work as well. Let's actually start there. When did you get your first tattoo? So growing up, I was like, I will never get a tattoo. I was like the most straight edge, pure, like no tattoos, no nothing. And then I turned 18 and the day of my 18th birthday, the first day that I could get a tattoo, I went and got one. And so I got the word 11 spelled out on my forearm and I got it with my dad. It's like our family number. It's been in our family for like generations and it's a really big deal Nothing for to do with Stranger Things. Nothing to do with Stranger Things, but then Stranger <laughs> Things came out like a couple years later. And I was so thankful that I went with the word 11 rather than the number 11, because I definitely got some Stranger Things comments. But if I had like right. zero one one on my arm, that would be even worse. Um, right. But yeah, no, so that was my first one. And uh, it's kind of grown from there. Cool. Cool. Awesome. You know, we were just chatting a little bit about, you know, tattooing, I think, and you could say this about all art forms, is really very much so about self-expression. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least that's the way I like to view it is like, I, one, want to express what I'm passionate about, what I'm interested in. And often I find self-expression, uh, especially in a, a world of so much content to absorb, mm -hmm. that finding my voice, my self-expression is very much so a, a discovery process. Mm -hmm. I don't just immediately know what it's supposed to be. I get influenced by things, but then I need to like, kind of start drawing, sketching, and, and kind of look inside and be willing to be surprised and discover what that self-expression wants to look like. I think a lot of people, and I did for a long time, I viewed social media as like this fake, you know, persona that you had to pretend to be something that you're not in order to interact with. And what I've come to learn, and one of the reasons why I've been following you, and I like what you share on Instagram, is that I realize it's not about that at all. It's the exact opposite. It mm -hmm. is a platform to help you discover your own self-expression. And mm -hmm. so it's so important in both those areas. And I think that if you're an artist, you're, you're good at finding that self-expression. But maybe if you're struggling with social media, you haven't found a way to express that that same thing that you did in that one area mm -hmm. in the area of social media but i think you're very capable of it so anyway that was what was on my mind when i wanted to chat with you yeah i think that's i think that's very accurate i think that there's a lot of misconceptions that are around exist around instagram and really social media more broadly and a lot of them come from the first decade or so of social media where it was dominated by filters and Photoshop and fakeness and, and inauthenticity. And now I feel like we've all kind of, for whatever reason, over the last few years, kind of awakened to the fact that like that stuff is fake. We're not into that. We don't want that. We'd much rather see what's real. We'd much rather see what's a work in progress rather than just the final product. And it is absolutely true. Like, you know, those Photoshop doctored up, you know, highly edited photos from some influencer who's had a million plastic surgery jobs like that, those are still going to do well from time to time. Those are still going to be, you know, the ones that get a lot of clicks from lonely men late at night. But at the end of the day, what we're all, we as normal human beings are actually looking for on social media is genuine connection, genuine authenticity, stuff that we can really 
connect with and resonate with. And it's not easy. I, I, I don't want to go into this conversation saying that, you know, for, for tattooers or for any kind of artist that posting on social media is going to be easy for you. But I do think it's possible. And I do think it's a skill just like anything else that can be learned and that you can really grow in and that you can use as a tool, like you've said, for self-expression rather than a tool for, you know, boosting your ego and promoting, you know, whatever fake thing you want to promote. But instead, it can actually be used as a vehicle to express yourself just like your tattooing can be. Yeah, I like that you're you're just saying like, it's not easy. Don't expect it to be easy. Mm -hmm. Why would you yeah. expect it to be easy? You know, um, uh, tattooing is not easy. Don't expect yeah. tattooing to be easy. If you do, you will be very disappointed. <laughs> and yeah, it, like social media, creating content. You know, I think a lot of tattooers feel like, Ugh, it's this whole other thing that I have to learn about. I have to learn video editing software mm -hmm. and I have to like get interesting within three seconds. How the hell do I become interesting in three seconds? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even natural. I feel like in our, you know, yeah. normally we're sitting now, we're having conversations. The mm -hmm. interesting stuff evolves mm -hmm. through the, you know, and then you're like, well, I have to like get, get that attention. I always tell people like, look, don't make your goal because we, we, you know, I've learned a lot of, I've gotten deep into the social media marketing, understanding how to use social media like the tool that it is. And I always tell people, don't try to make good content. Try to make a hundred pieces of bad content. Yes. Yes. I'm so yeah. glad you've said that. That's something that I've preached since day one. And then that's something that I always get a lot of pushback from, from the general population, from the uh, population of Instagram coaches who do what I do is they're always like, no, it, it should be all about quality and, and that should be your focus. And what I say is like, yes, there should be a, sh a certain threshold of quality. Like you shouldn't be aiming to make shit, but also if you are making more, if you're increasing the quantity, then the quality is naturally going to increase because basically that quantity is just practice. And to get, you know, algorithmic for a second, the way social media works nowadays is that statistically speaking, the more you post, the more you grow. There have been plenty of great studies done that have shown that there's a direct correlation between the frequency of your posting and the amount that you're going to grow. And so there's no magic number of you need to post every day or you need to post two times a day or every other day. But it is generally true that if you increase your posting, eventually the growth will also increase as well. And I think that that's kind of not just a combination of, of how the algorithms work, but also going back to our original point, that is how you get better. That's how you make better quality content. That's how I would imagine you become a better tattooer as well is practice and, and showing up and right. having um, in you know, the hours. more opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even not like you don't, you don't need to post, like I'll record a lot of stuff that I don't post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like my sketchbook, you know, like I don't tattoo everything that I draw, Yeah, but I'm doing it all the time. I'm doing it regularly. It's sort of like working that muscle, mm -hmm. something that really helped me a lot when I first started to like take content creation seriously. I heard a, a YouTube creator said, set up a camera put it in your kitchen and cook a meal and record and pretend you're like doing a cooking show yeah. and just have fun with it. Just be silly. Don't, and you're not going to share this content. This is just to like get used to being in front of the camera. Cause it is, it is weird. Like the minute you hit record, it's like you get weird, you know? Yeah. Do you ever, yeah, totally. do, you ever do you still go through that? I personally, I don't, I've been creating content now. I think my first YouTube video, I was like 10 years old and I was showing people wow. how to make a, like, a, how old are you now? I'm 26, I think. Yeah. 26. Yeah. So, you know, it's been over a decade. My first YouTube video was like super monotonous, super poor lighting. It was, it's hilarious to watch back. It's still on YouTube. Um, yeah. but I, I love that, that idea from that YouTuber is, you know, set up a camera, film yourself doing a cooking show. What I used to say is get on a, a, platform and another app that you don't have any followers on. Maybe it's Snapchat. Maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's whatever, just whatever other app, maybe you don't have it already. And so you're going to download that app, not for the purpose of growing your following there, not for the purpose of going viral or whatever there, but just for the purpose of using it just for the purpose of mm. practicing. Hey, how am I going to speak on camera? How am I going to deliver this video? Because like you said, there is like kind of this fine line we have to walk where 
we want to be authentic. We want to be conversational. We want to be organic and real. But at the same time, we have to understand that we are posting on social media. And there is a fair amount of, hey, you know, what's the hook I'm going to use in this video? Hey, what's the call to action? How am I going to structure this video? Like there is a fair amount of planning that usually goes into just video content. Yeah. And so just practicing that, like getting on a low cost platform where you don't even have to worry about anyone seeing it. Maybe you're not even going to post right, it. Maybe it's going to be a low. private account. The risk yeah. is low. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's really helpful for a lot of people. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea a lot because, yeah, it's like uh, tattooing on fake skin or something. The stakes are low. You're still mm-hmm. doing it, but like, and and also doing something different. Actually, that's something that I, I work with business coaches, mindset coaches mm-hmm. all the time. And something I realized recently is like, I need to get the hell out of my apartment and stop. Like, I need to go somewhere different and uh-huh. record content in like a new environment not only to be visually different and interesting, but to like get out of the the gears, the, the normal mechanisms, intellectually, uh, yeah. spiritually even, that I'm thinking with using mm-hmm. when I'm creating content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I find that true myself. I think there's like pros and cons. I have this desk set up that I'm currently at with like a bunch of lights and a nice camera and a nice microphone. And I record a lot of my reels from here, but I think I fell into a trap when I first moved to this house and we first kind of like built this setup is that I started recording like all of my reels here. And so they started to become kind of repetitive. And for myself mm-hmm. personally, I wasn't feeling super creative. They were kind of like following the exact ABC formula every single time. And so something as simple as literally just like moving to that corner of the room and like changing the direction my camera was in or like stepping into my living room to film made a big difference in my creativity and kind of just literally gave me a fresh perspective and allowed me to create some content that engaged my audience in a newer kind of unique way. Yeah. And you have a platform that you teach people about, um, you know, creating content, on social media. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So that that's called the Insta club hub. And my mom and I started that in 2020. We started that together. Cause your mom is also a content creator and she I've seen is. her. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. actually, I'll give you her you know, like quickest yeah. bio I can. She got her start in fitness. So if you've ever like turned on, maybe not so much nowadays, but maybe like five years ago or more, if you turn on the TV at 3 a.m. and you see a fitness infomercial on and there's some short little blonde lady bouncing around, that was probably my mom. And so that was like her start. And so she built a massive following mainly because of that. But her entire life since she was in high school, she's been an entrepreneur. And so she's owned a dozen different businesses. Her and my dad worked together. And so I grew up in like a very entrepreneurial household. She's a content creator, YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, podcast, all that good stuff. But then 2020 hits. I moved back home because I was in college at that point. So I'm living at home with my parents and my mom and I are talking. We want to create something that can kind of help content creators and help entrepreneurs really with how do you grow and make money on Instagram? Because it's always changing. There's always so many new, you know, fresh ideas, fresh filters, fresh strategies, fresh changes to the algorithm and features and things like that. And so we were like, well, we could create a course. But one of the challenges with courses is, uh, at least from what we've found, is that they, they're not living, like they're not ongoing. So you create them and they're done. And then a month later, Instagram changes. And now you either have to, as the creator of the course, go back in and like refilm everything or constantly update it. Um, we've thought about coaching, but it, it wasn't really scalable for us. You can only work with so many people at a time. And so we decided to create a membership. And so it's, we call it a club. It's the Insta Club Hub. And that's where we have like all of these different personalized playlists of videos for all of these entrepreneurs who are in there. We have live trainings every single month. We have templates for reels and for stories and for all your different kinds of posts. Um, yeah, and I, I signed really up to it because I wanted to learn more about it. I'm, I'm always learning. And immediately I was like, what, first of all, I was actually su- as a content and course creator myself, it's so professional. I'm, I was you. like a little jealous. Like it's <laughs> really, really well done. Thank you. I think one of the hard parts about content creation is like you just, okay, what's the idea? And then like how am I going to present the idea? Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of uh, material on there to quickly and easily be like, here's an idea for an idea and mm-hmm. here's a way to present that idea. And like Thank it you. just took, I think that's probably some of the hardest part of creating content is itself is what's the idea and then how do I present it? And so that it solves that problem pretty well, I think. 
Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. We've been doing courses and, and building things online for probably close to a decade now between my mom and myself. Um, yeah. And so a lot of time and hours went into this and uh, I really appreciate that. But also my mom, if I could say one more thing about her chronic yeah. ADHD. So like yeah. she's all over the place. I'm not luckily, but her time management skills are a work in progress, let's say. I think and every so time we're reason, listening to this, can identify with that. So you're speaking <laughs> to an audience that that resonates with. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Like I think literally on her Instagram, she calls herself like ADHD business coach or something like that. Mm. But the, we knew that going into it and we know that a lot of her audience resonates with that. And so we really built it in a way that like our goal was make it quick, make it fast. You're already spending, you already, everyone already feels like they're spending way too much time on their phones and on Instagram. So let's not make another platform where people have to spend a bunch of time. Let's make it so that if you only have like five, 10 minutes a week, you can learn what you need to know, get your direct, no BS info, get in, get out. And so that's like really a, a important guiding principle within the Insta club. But I really appreciate those compliments. That means a lot. Yeah, no. And I, I think like, Again, I'm always thinking about, okay, I want to deliver material in my financial coaching course, but how do I deliver it in a way where it's like un, unfuckable, like you yeah. can't fuck it up, yeah. you know, and, and for you, if you're like, okay, well, let's make it short and easy to digest. So even if you were there for five to 10 minutes a week, you'd still mm -hmm. get the value out of it. And if you absorb more, obviously you can get more, but yeah, that, that's a good way to think about it. Appreciate that. Um, so... I think something that I'm thinking about is like, I see some tattooers who are nailing the like authentic self-expression, being mm -hmm. themselves, just making videos that are, some are more interesting than others, but there's just an air of like, they're not trying to do anything. They're not trying to sell you anything. They're mm -hmm. not trying to, they're just being themselves and they're connecting. Yeah. And then there's people that completely resist it altogether. And like the idea of sharing anything about their lives just feels so intimidating. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for that person that like, you know, knows they probably should be doing this, but it just literally they'd rather go to the dentist and get their teeth pulled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what I will say is, is it feels like something that we're born with. It feels like when you're looking at social media, oh, this person was just born as an oversharer. They, they were born to, to talk about their lives on social media. And there are definitely those kinds of people. Like we all went to school with those kinds of people who they're just, they never stopped talking in class. But also I think for most people who are posting on social media, it's not very easy. And it is a skill that's been developed over time and it takes years. Like it's not something that's going to take months. The getting comfortable with sharing about your personal life online it really takes a long time. And it's something that most people are not comfortable with. Most people aren't these open books just talking about their entire life on social media. What I will say is that you don't have to talk about literally everything. You can pick and choose. And I will say everyone picks and chooses, even the flipping Kardashians. Don't talk like, about everything. Don't talk don't about talk everything. Don't talk about that late night Taco Bell <laughs> experience exactly. in the bathroom at 3 a.m. Yeah, Don't exactly. Like there, there are, there are plenty of things to like leave <laughs> off of social media. Even the most authentic people in the world, there's still some <clears throat> level of like curation and figuring out like, what am I actually going to share? Just um, live stream every moment of your life. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that we're getting close to that with some of these TikTok lives. Right. Hey, all you artful listeners, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for giving a listen to the podcast. I hope that it's bringing some value to you in your life. That's really why I started this podcast. And if you're getting something useful or valuable out of it, I just want to invite you to go rate and review this podcast. It really helps me out. And it also helps other people find this podcast so that they can get some value out of it. They can feel more free around money and just get some wisdom and some knowledge that we're trying to share on here. So again, I'm not really asking anything else of you other than to just leave a review and rating for this podcast. It really helps me out and it helps other people find us. So thanks and enjoy the show. There's a lot of growth that can happen there. And I think that it's just choosing what you are going to share. One thing that I found helpful that I heard one time was share about your scars and not your wounds. So if you're someone who's getting into mm. the idea of, you know, and again, you don't have to share about your scars or your wounds, but if you're someone who's getting into that place where you're going to be more vulnerable, talk about some not so great things, talk about some not so amazing, wonderful uh, sunshine and rainbows things on your social media, because maybe that is 
important for your story or that's important for who you are. That's something that I've heard is helpful for a lot of people is talking about the things that you have healed from or the things that have happened in the past rather than, hey, here's what happened this morning while I was eating breakfast. Hey, here's the argument my wife and I got in last night at dinner. Like talking about the things that you've healed from rather than the things that are currently yeah. transpiring. Two, two things. I just, I like highlighting things that I hear guests come on mm -hmm. um, is take the perspective that this will take years. Mm -hmm. I think if you go into it and you're like, if I don't get good at this in two weeks, I'm not doing it again. Yep. <laughs> I think when you shift your perspective into, I'm going to keep at this until it gets easy, until it gets fun, because I used to hate creating content. And there are moments where I struggle with it, usually when I feel rushed, mm -hmm. but when I give myself ample time, and like I like to give myself like three, four hours at a time to create you know, content for Instagram, short form content. Again, like drawing, it takes me a minute to get into the flow and to, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've been doing it for over, you know, it takes what, 10 years, to, you have 10,000 hours, you, you've, you've mastered it, right? Mm -hmm. So you probably doesn't take you long to get into the flow, but it still takes me a minute. So giving myself time and recognizing that I am so much better now than I was a year ago, and I will be way better and easier a year from now. So shifting your perspective, and then I just, I needed to hear the, uh, the, the scars and wounds thing because mm -hmm. yeah, it's like if you, you don't want to sound, you don't want to complain or like sound like, you know, mm -hmm. a, a victim or something like that. Like that's not, people don't gravitate or resonate with that. But when you do talk about some of your fumbles or the things that are not so pretty about your life, people immediately feel like they're like, I, I have that too. Thank, thank God someone's saying this in public out loud and lets yeah. me know I'm not alone in yeah. whatever that is, you know? Exactly. 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 And it allows people to connect with you on a deeper level and to get into the actual like strategy behind this on Instagram. I would say that for most tattooers, this is something, this being, you know, sharing about your personal life and these things you've healed from and just all, all of you, that's what I would recommend sharing on your Instagram stories and less so on your Instagram feed. Your Instagram mm. feed should be pretty focused on your topic, your subject, your niche, whatever it is that you are really posting about. That's really what your feed is for. Your stories is where you can allow those people who have already followed you to get to know you on a deeper level. So they've seen your work. Mm. Maybe they were, they were shared, um, uh, uh, a, a piece you did or a video you created and they were like, Oh, I, I love this, this guy's style. I love the way this girl does this. And so they follow you. They're initially following you for a very superficial reason. It usually has something to do with themselves. They're following you because they're into what you're posting on the feed, but now they want to get to know you a little bit more, right? They want to build that relationship with you, build that trust with you. And so that's when they'll go to your Instagram stories and that's when they'll get all that background. My favorite piece that I've ever had done uh, was by an artist that I found on Instagram and on his Instagram feed, there's nothing but his tattoos and like some of his murals and things like that that he's done as well, but it's pretty much just his art. And he doesn't use his stories this way, but when I was getting tattooed with him, it was like a six hour session and we were talking, telling stories and I was hearing about his life and hearing about how he's a dad and he's also a professor at the local university and he's also done oh. artwork for the snowboards of one of my all time favorite snowboarders. And so I'm learning about all of this and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I already loved this guy's style and I already was excited for this tattoo, but now like I'm just connected to this artist. Like I really connect with him on a deeper level and I remember all these things about him and I really appreciate him even more. And so if he was to be talking about those things on his Instagram stories, I would be that much more connected before I even booked a session with him. I would be that much more invested before I even sat down in his studio. Yeah, I, I like that thinking about using the stories strategically. Cause again, this, this is a tool that we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Like any, like a tattoo machine or any tool, there are skillful ways to use it and there are unskillful ways to use it. And then there's experimenting, right? You can, once you learn some of the rules, which I mean, no one really knows the rules of <laughs> social media, but uh, once you kind of get the hang of some things, then you can start to yeah. bend them and move yeah, them around. I, I think that's important as well, that experimenting, like, like we said earlier, you know, we're not shit posting. We're not posting just, random crap for the sake of it. But experimenting is absolutely flipping huge. It's one of the things that I think is a real like secret sauce within my own Instagram or even within our business is just like always testing, always experimenting, always like, well, let's see if, hey, this random video that has nothing to do with Instagram that I saw on YouTube or this random video that has nothing to do with entrepreneurship that I saw on TikTok caught my eye. 
how can I experiment with incorporating that into my own content? How can I try out this new fresh idea that maybe no one else is doing? How could I restructure and think about how I'm using stories differently or how I'm using reels differently? Just always be testing. I think that's so huge because I think as entrepreneurs, it's not our job to have all the answers, but it's our job to be always asking questions, always be like researching and digging and trying to find out what's coming next and what's changing now so that we can stay on the cutting edge and and serve people better or help people solve their problems or whatever it is that we're specifically doing. I think also in, we're talking a lot about like what to do, but then there's like, I think it's important that people know why, why is this important and why Mm -hmm. is this not just important now, but why is this going to continue to be important? Yeah. So I I don't think, you know, I, I don't see a future where we, don't have social media, mm-hmm. right? I mean, not anytime soon. Not anytime soon, yeah. Will it change? Will it evolve? What, absolutely, 100%. It has been, it will continue to. Mm-hmm. And it it really is the most powerful marketing tool, especially when you consider the cost, right? Which for most of, it's free, you know, for yeah. the most part. Yeah. So like, why is it important? If I do, if I do sick tats, right? Why do I need to share about my myself and w- like why do i need to do that what would you say to someone like who's just like i don't understand why i need to even do this i just want to show cool tattoos yeah to to really give them a reason like why is this not just important now but why is this going to continue to be more important as the future continues yeah well like you said it's the ultimate currently free tool for marketing i do think in the next five years or so it will be something that's not so free For Mm. decades, we've all been saying, this is free, take advantage of it. And it's quickly becoming not free. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Twitter and Elon Musk with now having people pay. You know, that's that's soon going to be, it's already being experimented with on TikTok, having people pay for an ads free feed. And there's no greedier Mm. platform than Instagram and Meta and Facebook. And I'm sure they will follow suit with having us pay very soon. But currently, and for the next few years, at least, uh, it should be free. And yeah, I think that first of all, if you're an artist, if you're a tattooer who you're happy with where you're at, you're happy with what your life's like, you're happy with how many clients you've got, you're happy with what your business is doing, you don't right. need social media. If you're staying media. busy. Yeah. If you're staying busy, like if you're fully booked, no, you don't need don't social worry about media. It. Yeah, ignore it. Like there, there are plenty of billionaires on the planet who have never posted a single reel in their life, and that's totally fine. They're very happy. There's also plenty of people who don't have a dollar to their name who are very happy and very content who also have never posted a reel in their life. So no, you don't, you don't need right. social it's media. It's not important. But, it doesn't serve them. There's no practical yeah. means for doing that. Yes, yes. But let's assume that, you know, you're someone who you want more clients, you want more people coming in, you want to sell more or whatever you want, you want something more than what is currently existing in your life. I think that, like we've already said, social media and Instagram are a great marketing platform for that. But if you're someone who's like, I just want to do like sick tats, and I'm going to take pictures of them, just post them on my Instagram every once in a while. And that's all I'm ever going to do. It's going to be tough for you to stand out because we live in a day and age where there are tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of tattooers on Instagram who are doing exactly that. They're taking pictures of the tattoo that they just finished and they're posting it on Instagram. They're doing a couple posts a week and that's it. And so the only way that you are going to stand out if you're in that category and that's your strategy is if your tattoos are just that mind blowing, that much better that much cooler they're that like you have that much of a loyal audience that they're just obsessed with your work and they're just sharing it with the world it's groundbreaking it's revolutionary well yeah sure then you're going to grow because your tattoos alone are what are going to allow you to stand out but for most artists if you're not in that you know a plus 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 five star gold award winning and and you don't need to be Right. Yeah, no, I'm like, saying, yeah, you absolutely don't need to right. be. Right. You no. don't, you don't, I don't think you're saying that, but yeah. yeah, I think for anyone listening, like, you don't need to be. It's okay. You can be <laughs> wherever you're at in tattooing. Yes. And that might not be the ultimate driver, but, you know, if that's you, then yeah, creating content is another way to stand out. 
Yeah, and really how you are going to stand out is by bringing your personality into it, to bring that back full circle, the way that you separate yourself from anyone else who might have might have like a, a similar style or a similar look or they're at this, a similar stage in their journey. You're going to stand out because of your background. You're going to stand out because, like I was telling that story earlier, because you have two young kids at home and you're a professor at the local university and you've done work for some famous snowboarder that a lot of people would know like that suddenly allows you to stand out and now you're like, oh, okay, I connect with this guy's art over these other people who are kind of similar to him because of X, Y, and Z personal reasons. So that's that's the reason to share more of like the personal life, the behind the scenes, maybe even the work in progress, right? Because if everyone is, you know, generalizing here, but let's say everyone's posting this similar style, but you're the one person who's actually showing your behind the scenes. You're getting really vulnerable and showing the yeah. sketches, showing the things that ended up in the trash, showing the, the work in progresses. That might be a unique perspective or a unique look into what, everyone else, quote unquote, is already doing. Yeah, I've been telling people, this is something I learned in, in marketing in general, this is all marketing, you get your best marketing material from your clients, from the things that they're saying and thinking. So mm -hmm. I've been telling tattooers, like, what are those questions that every client asks you? What's mm -hmm. your most painful tattoo? What's the weirdest thing you've ever tattooed? Uh -huh. What was your first tattoo? When did, how did you get into tattooing? How does that, why is there a rubber band on that machine? Like all these questions that clients already are asking, those are, that's the content material right there. So if you listen to your clients in that way, and like, what are the things that I'm being asked a lot? You're going to get all the marketing material you need, all the content ideas from your clients. Absolutely. 1000% beyond a shadow of a doubt. If there's nothing else that anyone takes away from this right. episode today, I hope they re-listen to that because that is that, I mean, that's, that's absolutely gold right there. So many people, business owners, especially who that's who I'm primarily working with. They're thinking about like, what do I want to create? You know, what do I want to put out in the world? What do I think people want to see? And like, yes, there is a certain amount of self-expression involved and a certain amount of like your own desires and passions and your own art. But also if you're creating content for an audience, don't guess at what that audience wants. Don't assume what they want. Talk to them, ask them, and most likely you already are. And so use that information to inform your content. That's something that I'm doing on a weekly basis is talking to my audience, DMing them, putting up polls on my Instagram stories, just to understand where is my audience at? What are they struggling with? What questions do they have? Because then when I directly address those, that's the kind of post that when someone sees it, they're like, oh, this is for me. Yes, I totally resonate. This is me. Oh my gosh, this is answering my question. I'm going to stay hooked rather than just some random topic that I think is going to be interesting. Any other fun tricks, little hacks? I mean, you know, something I've used before where like if I want to get some, and I'm sure these things will continue to change, but if I mm -hmm. say I, I want to promote a certain, um, I'm doing a, a event at the tattoo mm -hmm. shop, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm and I want to promote it, and I want get people to see the event, know about it, uh, and I'll promote it in the stories. You know, if you create a poll or something like that that is really engaging or funny, or mm -hmm. more people want to engage with, and you you it boost the engagement on that first story. You know, the all the stories after that will get more engagement. They'll get more eyeballs on it, and so mm -hmm. that's like a, a strategy. Yeah. If no one's doing that already, you know, take that one. But are there any other, just like practical tool, technical tweak hacks that I don't like the term hacks, but yeah. I, you know, but you know what I mean. Any, I anything you. like that that you you like? Yeah. So there's there's a few things I can say here. Number one, that that one's awesome. Another great stories hack if you're trying to boost up your story views is to take a break like maybe 24 to 48 hours from your story so there's nothing on your story. And then you can come back. You can come back with a poll, like you said. Something I've been enjoying doing recently is stories, and this sounds weird, where it's just like a still image, maybe just like a solid color, and then like three, two or three paragraphs of text, which sounds counterintuitive because you would think it's like, well, no, Instagram's visual. It should be like a video, right? No, instead, just like two or three paragraphs of text, maybe talking about the pop-up event or telling a story that recently happened in your life. Those stories tend to do really, really well. To give people have to hold on the screen. That's what I was going to say. Because, because to stop you have to, hold they have on to engage to with it. it. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead, if you do like a 45 second video, someone's probably going to get bored halfway through and then they're going to tap or they're going to be invested, but they're going to miss a second and then they can't rewind because that's just not how Instagram works. Right, um, right, so right. That's, that's a great strategy for stories. Another great thing that is hopefully a word of encouragement for everyone listening is that 
in 2023, reels are getting 76% less views on average than they were in 2022. So there's a significant drop. So hopefully that's a word of encouragement for everyone. Right. That, hey, you're, you're not alone. You're like, not doing not, it wrong. Yeah, you're it's not, not necessarily that you, up. Yeah. It's not you are just that shitty. It's just that, hey, that's kind of how things are working now. 73% um, is huge. Huge. And there's a lot huge of factors. Dip. A yeah. lot of things that are causing that. I think the biggest one is just supply and demand. Demand is a little bit down. People are spending a little bit less time on Instagram this year than they were last year. But oh, more, interesting. Yeah, but more, it's very close. It's like 12 hours to like 11.7 or 11.8 hours per month. So it's, 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 it's a very small difference. Yeah. Um, but what's really changed is supply. And supply is up depending on the number of followers you have. People are posting between 30 and as high as 95% more reels per month. So mm -hmm. basically that's 30 to 95% more supply with an equal or even slightly decreased demand. And so that's going to result in a lot less views yeah. to go around. Um, I yeah. don't know. I, I know very few people. Economics yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but what the good news is, is that carousel posts, which are like the slideshow style posts where there's right. like multiple photos, those are up in 2023 in terms of reach and in terms of engagement. And photo posts as well are up in terms of engagement. So that's mm. great news. If you're someone who doesn't like taking videos, you don't necessarily right. have to. Photos and carousel posts can be a really great way, especially statistically speaking in 2023, to reach more people and increase your engagement. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I get locked into like, yeah, you're just like, okay, let me get good at reels. And then you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm just going to like, figure it out and I have 60 seconds and then there's 90 seconds and and then all of a sudden it's not good and you're like, oh, now I have to do this whole other thing. And I think rather than doing that, I think the approach that I'm going to start taking is just really switching it up a lot so that I'm mm -hmm. never just getting locked into one type of thing because I think no matter what changes happen to the algorithm, I think that you can always expect that if you just, fo if you just keep harping that one thing over and over again, it's it's going to eventually underperform and then yeah. you're going to be like stuck doing the thing that doesn't work as well as it used to. Yeah. It's going to get boring. It's going to get monotonous. It's going to like even something as little as like having the same background in all of your videos or, you know, right. Wearing saying, go, the same go out, shirt. Go out yeah, about. exactly. Exactly. That, those little what are, things. What are some other ways that you up? make making content fun? Um, I think that the, the experimenting is big for me. Like, I do plenty of what for me aren't very exciting videos where I'm sitting right here at this desk. I have this set up and I'm recording like some quick tip directly to camera. But when I start experimenting with, Hey, I had this funny idea for like more of like a skit style reel, or maybe I'm going to like throw on a wig and like be cringe for a second and like do something that a typical uh, you know, m straight white man isn't going to do throw on a wig and like be goofy for a minute, or I'm going to dance. And like, that's something that's big for me. Something that I do all the time on my Instagram people. Luckily people love it. They don't hate me for it, but like, I'm going to do a goofy dance. I'm not a great dancer, but I'm going to do a goofy dance and like have fun with it. And that kind of brings life back to me and my content creation, because if I'm not enjoying what I'm making, I cannot expect my audience to enjoy the creation either. Yeah. I, uh, I, there was a, a, a friend, a, a past client tattoo artist who I would have never expected her to do a dance video uh -huh. on Instagram. Just not, didn't, didn't see that coming. And then she did and she, uh -huh. w like, she worked it. She was I like, I'm going to just have so much fun. It was so unexpected mm -hmm. that like everyone, you could just see everyone was like lit up by it. And it was so it was funny. You know what's fun about it? It's because she just wasn't taking herself seriously. She wasn't yeah. taking it too seriously. She was just having fun. And like, you know, just the comments were hilarious. Like everything about it was fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember hearing someone talk about this once. And maybe you know what it's like. There's certain things that people are looking for in content. Like they're not consciously thinking about this. But mm -hmm. like one is they want to like feel good. Right. They want to laugh. They want to feel good. Two is they want to learn something, mm -hmm. right? So it's mm -hmm. like educational. Do you know what? There's like four main ones. I can't remember the, the other two. Do you know yeah, what I'm talking I, about? I usually break it. Like you can break it 
into four. I usually just gen- group it together into three. It's one of okay. them is, like you said, education. One of them is entertainment. So just like, hey, captivate your audience, grab their attention for a minute. And then the third is usually like inspire or motivate. Like that's mm. usually what I like to say. Those are the three kinds of, of content. I guess some people add in a fourth one, which is like to inform. Maybe it's like breaking news or, um, mm. you know, just basically like, uh, it like, could be yeah, grouped you, in with educate a little bit too. That's where I l- I lump that in with education. So for me, yeah. like there's three, but some people break it into four. Yeah. So like when you create any kind of content, you can just ask yourself like, if I were to watch this, if this showed up on my feed one, would it stop the scroll? Right? Would mm-hmm. I feel like oh I want to know more about this? And then after consuming this content, <laughs> yeah. am I do I feel good? Did I learn something? Or do I feel inspired in a way that I wasn't beforehand? And just like do that little check and ask yourself, I think it'll, and then post it anyway, even if you, if you, even if you don't feel that just post it anyway, but you'll start to learn, you'll get a good feedback loop of the content you're creating. If it's creating one of those three things. And then on the next one, you'll be a little bit better, you know, try try to be 1% better every day. I was listening to, uh, Mm -hmm. delivering happiness, the, the CEO of Zappos, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, but um, really interesting book on how they built the company and the, the, the fun corporate culture that they had, like the really like kind of silly stuff they were doing. Uh, and they just said, just trying to get 1% better every day. If you get 1% better every day, then at the end of the year, you'll be, you know, 37,000% better because of compound interest or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's crazy to think about that, but you're not going to get better if you're not actually pressing post. So I love that you said like, hey, even if you watch it and you're like, ah, shoot, this wasn't this wasn't quite hitting mm-hmm. the mark, still post it because how often do we, it happens to all of us, it happens to myself included, the thing that you're like, eh, this isn't very good, this missed the mark, this wasn't my best, you post it and it does the best Dude, of anything. it happens. It, it's as if yeah. the best content is the content that I just do haphazardly and just like seemingly don't even think about. I did something the other day on uh, a tattooer applied to my shop and they uh, brought a resume. Okay. And like, it's not common to bring a resume for like to apply for, usually just have a portfolio. Gotcha. I've never brought a resume. I just, and I just made a video just saying, I thought it was a nice touch. I thought it was a nice touch. Not only did it get like a ton more likes and engagement and and really what, but it also got a ton of trolls on there. Yep. Hating, hating (laughs) my idea. And they they had to get their voice out. It's like they just that's how they get their dopamine hit, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's um, um there's there's a fair <laughs> there's a fair amount of intentional strategy behind controversial posts. I like to mm. tell people, hey, like, don't get controversial for the sake of getting canceled. Don't get controversial <laughs> just for the sake of the clicks. But if there's something that you believe in that you think might be somewhat controversial or you think might kind of go against the norm or the general expected average talk about that sort of thing. Like when I talk about focusing on quantity rather than quality, I know that half of the comments are going to be coming from my head as if I just cussed out their mother because I said (laughs) that they should post more rather than trying to make a perfect post. Um, that's rock. Why are you trying to ruin all these people's lives? Literally? They're like posting your opinion on social media. (laughs) And I'm like, hey, if, it's, if, it's, if, if I ever say something, and, and I could have said this at the very beginning, if I ever say something that isn't true for you, that isn't working for you, by all means, give me the middle finger and keep doing what you're doing. Don't let me stop you. But yeah. hey, there's a, definitely a strategy to sharing some stuff that's a little bit controversial, ruffling some feathers, I like to say, because it's great for engagement. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and like, I think it's like more important and necessary than people give it credit to. Uh, there's this other creator she's like a manifestation coach or they're i'm not sure their pronouns but um they they're like be the villain like because when you are the villain like Mm -hmm. the people that you resonate with the most are going to be the most connected to it and the fact Mm -hmm. that it creates a powerful oppositional response to some people means it's going to resonate that much more deeply with someone else and yeah, I just think like that is so 100%. important to, to recognize. I always say it's it's like being like vanilla ice cream. Like if you're vanilla ice cream, like yeah, you'd be the like, best vanilla ice cream in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even like okay, like let's say you're vanilla ice cream, <laughs> but it's not controversial. You, you have some fans, right? Like there's some people like yeah, I like vanilla, but like there's no one who's 
there's some people don't get, I'm sure they're listening and now they're going to come at me for this, but like <laughs> there, 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 there's very few people in the world who are passionate about vanilla ice cream. Uh-huh. But I bet you there are some people who are like super, like here's, here's a great example. Not very many people are passionate about plain old cheese pizza, but people get really passionate about pineapple on pizza. Like you Mm. are either team pineapple on pizza and you're all for it and you're going to argue for it or you hate it so much and it's an abomination and it's the worst food ever created. But people don't feel that same way about like pepperoni. So when you dare to get controversial, when you dare to be unique in yourself and you dare to like venture into that territory where some people are going to hate you, the other side of the spectrum also expands and suddenly there's a lot more people who are obsessed with you and love you. And, you know, I'm saying you, but this could apply to one specific post or idea as well. So be the pineapple pizza. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Don't be the vanilla ice cream. Don't be the vanilla ice cream. Don't be the... You know, uh, what's it, I don't know if it's controversial ice cream flavors, but pineapple yeah, on pizza is think, definitely one of I was trying things. to think of, like, what is a controversial ice cream flavor? Like, there's definitely pineapple on pizza. I don't know. Maybe if it's, like, like hot sauce on ice cream. I don't know. I'm sure there's some people who believe that that's delicious. I don't know. Right. But, yeah, pineapple. But it, it is because the people that love it, they love it. They absolutely do. And I, I like that metaphor. I like thinking about, like, is this something that, and often it's like it really is usually not the thing that I thought was going to be controversial. Very true. <laughs> Ends up being controversial, like resumes at a tattoo shop. I was like, oh, people were like, you're ruining the tattoo industry. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So just just have fun with it. Learn these skills. Learn some strategies. Test them out. Right. These are I'm just sort of like summarizing yeah. some of the the key points here and and Mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's not going to be easy don't expect it to be it's going to take longer than you think it should so expand your time horizon i also think and this is goes particularly for tattooing i don't know that this this is unique to tattooing is that we and people talk about it being oversaturated the, the tattoo industry the truth is that we're just becoming like any other business a normal amount of saturation meaning Anywhere where people can like be successful and make money, and especially if you can do it having fun, you're going to naturally have a lot. So like, you know, there's a lot of dentists out there. There's, Mm -hmm. I don't know how much fun dentists are having, but some of them probably enjoy it. But there's a lot, plenty of carpenters and plumbers and things. And so it's normal to have saturation and competition, right? We've been really fortunate in tattooing that that hasn't been the case for Mm -hmm. a long time. And you could just sort of show up be a pretty decent tattooer, have an Instagram and like clients would show up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to recognize that that was special and that's not the case anymore. And it's not a bad thing that it's not the case anymore, but all businesses thrive. I think the key element is how adaptable are they? That's it. Like all the other stuff you can figure out, but like if you're not going to be an adaptable business, you're going to sink in my Mm -hmm. opinion. I and that might be agree. controversial, but <laughs> that might be controversial. I a thousand percent agree though. And I think that that's, like you said, that's true in every single industry. I don't care if you're a tattooer or if you're a mom blogger 10 years ago, it was revolutionary just to exist on social media. But now right. we have to, we have to do more in order to really make ourselves stand out from that normal amount of saturation. Yeah. So if you're wanting to be busier than you are, and that's good, or, or, you know, I always tell people, busy tattooers, sometimes they don't, it's not that they're trying to be busier. It's that they want to focus more on a particular style of tattooing, right? They might be busy, but they want to focus in this direction or they want to work less and increase their value so that they can increase the price of what they offer, right? Mm-hmm, There's mm-hmm. so many ways. It's not just about getting busier. So you can use social media in these, in these ways. And so either you're doing the thing you want to do, right? You're tattooing the style you want, you are working the amount you want, you're charging the amount you want, right? Or you're marketing yourself. You're finding ways to create those clients. And now Mm -hmm. social media is not the only way to do it. It's just one of the most, it's the most eyeballs at once, right? Yeah. And so I like to like look at it because some of the people be like, I don't really have time. I don't have the time to, oh, I don't have the time to do it. And it's like, well, are you as busy as you want to be? Are you doing the thing you want to do? If not, then you kind of need to find, make the time. Yeah. Do you struggle with, I mean, I, I guess most of what you do is kind of a raw but any, any tips on creating time for social media content creation? 
Totally. So I, I no longer struggle with that sort of time management, but no one cares to hear that. That doesn't help anyone to say yeah, what, 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 what I will say is Screw how have you, I got bro. to this stage though? That's, that's what's important to talk about is how yeah. did I get yeah. here where I'm spending, I spend less than 30 minutes a day on Instagram. I spend maybe an hour or two a week on creating content for Instagram. I also have a podcast and other stuff where I'm creating content. Um, but for Instagram, how did I get here? First of all, 10,000 hours of practice, so that it does not take me very long at all to to create content. Mm. Number two, lots of systems in place in terms of how I am creating my content. So I have this whole setup right here. I can tell Alexa one phrase, and she lights up my desk. She turns on my microphone. She turns on my camera, and I can press record and start going. So that saves me time. I love systems. Let's see. Yeah. Huge proponent of systems. So Uh any systems you can put in place, absolutely. Yep, I'm I'm systematic with my script writing. I have all these different ideas, idea collection. I would say there's two strategies that really allow me to show up more frequently, post more often, but are the real game changers. Number one is the not sexy one, the one that, as I say it, everyone's going to want to plug their ears, and that is hiring help. So I have someone who is a full-time graphic designer who designs my carousels for me. I have a full-time editor who edits all my reels for me. These are things that I used to do myself, but I realized that I could spend hours every single week doing this, doing these tasks, or I could outsource them so that I had more time to do what I love, to spend time with my family, to travel, or to create more content for them to edit. So I have an editor, like a video editor. I have a graphic designer. I have a community manager who it's her job to just like respond to all my comments and DMs because I get a couple hundred comments, a couple thousand DMs a day. So it's her job to just respond to all of those and chat with people and make sure that the community engagement is high. But that's a stage I've gotten to. And that's something that Maybe as a, as a tattoo artist, you might film a bunch of videos throughout the day, and then it takes you an hour or two every single night to chop them up and put them together and create them into posts when instead you could hire someone, not very expensive, for an hour a day to- Or you could trade tattoos content. with someone, <laughs> which is go. what we all love to do. We bargain. But like, I, yeah. I want to I wanna take- I want to take what you're doing at the level you're at and like break it down in a way for like even the everyday tattooer could apply, you know? So like, yeah, have someone come help film some content, have them, you know, create some, you you, you know, these days uh, almost every 22 year old is like a great graphic designer and editor. Mm -hmm. And like, Mm -hmm. they just like intuitive, my four year old daughter is like becoming intuitive with these things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, find someone that that gets you, gets your vision you can connect with yeah. and trade with them. And yeah. it'll be so worth it. You'll save that time. And I always view time and money are the same thing. Yeah. They're just the same energy expressed in two different ways. Totally. And so if you can save yourself that time on it and get some help and don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, and then the last thing that I would say, and this is more of a strategic thing, is if you had a post that was three months ago or older, you posted it and it did well, Post it again. Like if you're Mm -hmm. listening to this today, scroll back to, I don't know, spring or even summer of this past year and find a post that did well. However you define did well, just did better than the average and post it again. You could take, you could like download it using one of those like special websites to download it. If you still have it in your camera roll, just find it in your camera roll. You don't need to tell people it's a repost because they don't care. Most people missed it the first time anyways. Most people never saw it the first time. The the few people who did see it, they don't remember it. And the only people who did see it and do remember it, they remember it because it was that good and they probably wouldn't mind seeing it again. So take that content from a few months ago and post it again. For myself, it's anywhere from, depending on the week, 60 to even as high as like 80, 85% of my posts are reposts or are recreations of something mm. I've posted in the past. That way I'm not constantly having to like be creative and come up with new ideas and stress myself out with what am I going to do that's fresh this week? I'm not. I'm going to take a post from April that did well and post it again because I know most people have forgotten about it by now anyways. And if it did well in the past, it's probably going to do well now. Yeah. Even even tattoos that you posted in the past, yes. like not everyone's scrolling down your feed yes. and definitely not everyone saw it. So if you're, mm-hmm. you know, looking for content, I know people do that, but, and I don't know why there's this, yeah, there's like some weird, I, I think sometimes I'm like fighting the imaginary follower in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like there's an imaginary follower that sees that I reposted something and they're like, look, this loser has nothing <laughs> good to share. So he's reposting that thing. And I am so bothered 
that you mm -hmm. wasted my precious attention and time by yeah. repo. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like there's this imaginary person that never existed and never yeah. will exist that keeps me from just doing the damn thing. Yeah. And it's like, have you ever done that to anyone else? Like, have you ever been scrolling right. through your feed and be like, oh my gosh, they posted this How months dare ago. You? No. <laughs> If anything, yeah. you, if you do remember, the most you'll do is like, oh, yeah, I remember when they post this before. And it's almost like you pat yourself on the back for like remembering that. But you don't care right. because it was a good post and you remembered you it anyways. You don't. No one cares. No one cares. You know, if you, if you post bad content, no one's seeing it because the algorithm ain't promoting it. So yep. don't worry about it. Yep. And if you posted good content, keep sharing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's something I've talked about on other podcast, uh, other before, and I, I heard it from uh, this tattooer Reese Hilburn. She came in and did a, a like a guest speaker talk in my course, and she's. I just keep thinking about that tattooers, they're creating content for other tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. They're not creating content for their clients. Yeah. It's a big problem. Do you see that in other areas too? I see that in every area. I don't I really think okay, of that's a not unique to tattooing. Oh, it's it's Instagram coaches. They make content for other Instagram coaches. It's uh, mom bloggers making content for other mom bloggers. It is people in network marketing making content for other people who are already in that exact same business. It, I, right. I can't think okay. of a vertical where that doesn't exist. And it's oh, again wow. because they're getting in their own mindset as a tattoo artist, as a content creator. And so they're making content for themselves that would resonate with them rather than what would resonate with their audience who might be eight steps behind them or who might not even yeah. know half the words that they're using or the jokes that they're making. And then tattoo is very, I mean, tattooing can be a very judgmental space, unfortunately. And I think that's not unique to tattooing either, but mm -hmm. I think people are afraid that, oh, I'm gonna post this thing and some tattooer, some really cool, super awesome tattoo artist is gonna be out in the world thinking, judging me silently over there. Or God forbid mm -hmm. they actually comment something negative. And so to avoid, to play it safe and to avoid having someone think anything negative about you, you people will just not either not create the content or they'll create the content that they think all their peers will think is cool, but ultimately mm -hmm. doesn't resonate with your ideal audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh you know, like when when in life does does success or when in life does the things that you want ever come about from playing it safe and staying comfortable and just doing what's easy probably never. So like and and of course the those amazing Ta talented tattoo artists they're probably not going to see your post anyways like you said i love that you know if it's bad content no one's going to see it anyways if it's good content great people are going to see it and that's what you wanted before we wrap up just something i was thinking are you using uh, artificial intelligence at all these days and, and if you are how are you using it yeah, so I use ChatGPT a fair amount with like script writing. I don't use it to help me come up with my ideas, but I do use it to help me kind of like expand on ideas or maybe rephrase things or phrase things in a way that's maybe more concise. I definitely use it for that. I do use a tool called Munch, which is getmunch.com, I think is the website. But Munch is, it uses AI to basically take a long video, kind of like our podcast today, and it automatically chops it up into short form content. So like I said, I do two podcasts a week for our own show and I use Munch to kind of like chop up that podcast and turn it into reels that can be shared on my social media. And then I recently started using a, a new app called Five, or I should say it's a website currently, Five. And Five is really cool because it, it scrapes all of your comments and it looks at every comment that's ever been left on your Instagram and it gives you all of this data on who's commenting on your account which is cool. It's cool to know like who comments the most, who, who has a ton of followers and comments on my page. But more importantly, it pulls up the comment and then it looks at everything that I've ever replied in order to learn my language, my tone, my style. And it predicts what I would probably reply to that person. So I can press one button and instantly send that comment response. Or if I want to mm. tweak a little bit, of course, I can like manually tweak it, but it's using AI to basically predict, hey, here's what you would normally say, here's what you'd normally respond. And so that really saves myself a lot of time. And very soon I'm gonna have my community manager use that as well so that she can save a lot of time uh, with like yeah. engaging. Very cool. I, I think again, like people get very hung up with AI and I actually think what people get hung up, they, one, they think they, they either think it's cheating for some reason. Okay. I don't know why they think that, yep. but that's what they think. Well, the reason they think it's cheating is because they think it makes something easier. 
Mm. And I don't actually think AI makes things easier because it then becomes this whole other thing that you need to learn yes. how to do. Yeah. And the minute it makes something easier, you then expand into the new area that is also challenging and therefore doesn't actually get easier. So it it takes it, it can make certain things quicker, but it's still another skill set, something that has to be learned, has to be developed over time and and ultimately I guess you could say it makes some things easier, but not in the way you think. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes some things easier, but it also makes some things a lot harder. And you, you have to whole, learn a whole new skill set, right? It's like, um, like when the car was first invented, I'm sure the car is a lot easier than driving a horse and buggy, but there was suddenly a lot of new skills you had to learn, especially early days. Like you had to be a mechanic, you had to learn all these different new machineries to be able to just drive a car when it was probably easier quote unquote to just stick with what you know and you know drive the yeah. horse and buggy i'm wondering like what are what are some ways tattooers can i mean look first of all i i've seen a lot of tattoo podcasts coming out and i think that's actually kind of a cool idea don't make your goal to like get some top ranking podcast mm -hmm. but like shoot the shit with your friends you know whatever it is record it and then put it into munch you said and you yeah, can munch. chop it up you know mm -hmm. If you're struggling to make content, you could spend one hour a week doing something like that and then yeah. share that, you know, and get the best clips out of that. Even just like life at the shop. Like one of the things, and I don't tattoo as much as I used to. I'm doing a tattoo this week I'm really excited about. But <laughs> the thing I miss the most about tattooing is not tattooing. Hmm. The thing I miss the most is being at the shop with a bunch of people and just like you're all buzzing, you're all in the zone and just like shooting the shit and those moments of deep connection and laughter and just it's those magic moments that I miss the most. And so it's almost like the minute you hit record, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So don't try to force it. But <laughs> uh -huh. uh, anyway, you can get close to that, uh, I, I think, that. would be really helpful. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Cool, man. Well, how do people uh, find you? I hear you're really hard to find on Instagram. Yeah, so it's probably best to go to MySpace, myspace.com forward slash. MySpace.com, no. uh, great, great, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, in, Instagram.com forward slash Brock 11 Johnson, or I guess you could just look Brock up 11 Brock Johnson, 11 yeah. Johnson. We'll put a, a link in the in the details, yeah. Yeah, that's the best place to find me. That's the best place to get connected. I respond to the majority of my direct messages, so if anyone enjoyed that's today's episode. We, I, th I think I DM'd you, and then I shot you an email, and I'm, I'm so yep. glad that you responded, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if anyone shoots me a DM, or if they really enjoyed today's podcast, and they want to, like, you know, take a screen screenshot and post it on their stories and yeah. share like what they learned or what you took call away to from action. it. I think that'd be really awesome. Yeah. Don't forget that call to action, right? <laughs> See what he just did right there? He used it's, the call to action. I do this stuff for it, a living. It's it's so habitual by this point. Right, but I'm <laughs> catching it because I want people yeah, to yeah. see it and be like, yeah. don't forget to do that. Ask people, ask your audience to share what you're doing. So I love that you did that because yep. that's another learning moment. And then uh, the Insta Club Hub, I think, is at least worth checking out. It's a subscription-based thing, so you can always check it out for a month, yeah. bounce off of it, and come back if you need. Um, but yeah. I, I don't see how something like that, you know, it's not – super expensive. Uh, if you put a little bit of time into it, I can't see how that wouldn't pay off in saving you time, which will help you create content, which will help you grow your business. So I think it's a really useful tool rather than flailing around randomly, yes. you know, hoping something works, you know, yes. like just get a couple tips over there and check it out and uh, you might even enjoy it. You, know, <laughs> you might even have fun in the process. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brock. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show. Again, I just want to prompt that if you got some value out of this conversation, please go and leave us a rating and a review on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you saw this podcast. It really helps me out and it really helps other people to find this podcast. I want more people to have these types of conversations around money so that we can all be more free and at ease and abundant and able to create the lives that we really want to live. So please share this and rate and review. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.